Okay, at this stage we're going to make a tray. Now, what I'm going to use this for is this little um, tray for putting general stuff in, like my phone or some change or anything by the side of my bed. So it's just going to be a simple tray with little handles in that I can um, use to pick it up. Okay, so if you have a look at this first stage, I have um, drawn out a, a template using 2D design and then I've placed it on an A4 sheet of paper and you can see I need two ends, so times two, two sides and then one base. So just to remind myself, the first stage will be to cut out the paper template and then draw around them onto the wood. Okay, so at this stage I need to cut out this middle section, so I'm going to fold the piece of paper over and just do a little cut in it and make it easier then to, to cut through. And then open it out again and then just cut around the edges. Okay, now for this stage, I need to think carefully about how I want to position the pieces and this is a nice straight edge and this is, so I'm going to use those straight edges. So I'm going to position the base so it's using this straight edge and this, so then I only have to cut out this section. So I'm going to place that there and then uh, have to think about the other parts. And this I rotated it around so I'm using that straight edge there it's called tessellation so it just positions it in the other angle so it just makes it easier to fit it on so I've tessellated it to reduce the wastage of material and now I've decided to push it up against there so I can use this straight edge for this bit Okay, so at this stage I'm going to cut through the MDF using the frat saw. Um, I'm going to lower down the, the clamp um, so that it rests just above the MDF so that if it lifts it's not going to go anywhere. And you just see if you loosen the little thumb screw and then you drop it down just above the MDF and then you tighten it again. And then don't forget to turn on the extractor and this little uh, pipe should be just over so it collects any dust and then just very slowly follow the line and cut through and remember that it only cuts by pushing forwards onto it and it doesn't go sideways um, otherwise you'll end up snapping the blade it's very delicate so just be very careful when using it and um, just remember that you can't go around 90 degree corners like this so you'll have to go all the way across straight and then come at it again from a different angle afterwards. So just watch this part and uh, you'll see what we do next.
Okay, so at this stage, I'm just going to sand down the edges just to um, make sure that they are perfectly 90 degrees and they're up to the, the lines that I drew. So I'm going to use a little 90 degree, um, well, a little uh, set, uh, set square on here just to make sure that it's pushed and it's at the right angle to the piece of wood. Don't forget to put the extractor on. And obviously just watch your fingers. So you can see I'm pushing it against this here just to make sure that it stays at 90 degrees. And then move it across back and forth just to make sure you, you sand it down to the level. Once they're all sanded, we'll then work on the next stage, which will be to cut these little bits out in the middle. Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to have to drill a hole in certain parts. We've got a drill and a, a drill bit that will be slightly thicker than the coping saw blade. So you'll see on this just in a minute, I'm going to start marking out where to, where to drill my holes. This one's being the corners, so either side. I'm going to draw a circle roughly the same uh, diameter as the as the drill bit that you're going to use, just to give you a, a think about exactly where you need to drill it. Okay, now I've got a scrap piece of wood on the table, and I've got my drill bit. So I'm going to drill my hole through here and through here, and I'm clamping it down with a quick release clamp. Make sure you don't drill too deep. Obviously, you could go through the scrap piece of wood as well as onto onto the table. Okay, so at this stage, if you hold on to the um, this section of the coping saw so it doesn't twist around, and then you do twist the handle so it'd be uh, anti-clockwise, so lefty loosey effectively, until it loosens the tension between the blade and this these two points. Now, at this stage, I need my coping saw, and I'm going to unscrew the blade. So if you hold onto this section with your thumb so it doesn't rotate and then just twist the handle um, to the left so that it unscrews the tension, it releases the tension so that the blade can come out. If you try and keep it still on this one it'd be better. Feed it through one of the holes and then hook it back onto that little part there. Hold onto it again so it doesn't twist and then twist it to the right so it's nice and tight and held in position. Now if you open up the vise, drop it into the vise and then clamp it, you want it to be as low in the vise as you can. Uh, MDF is only very weak, so if you do it high in the vise it could snap. If you want to keep it as low as you can. And then just start following the line, making sure you're cutting on the waist side of the line. You need to regularly obviously lift it up um, and then go a bit deeper down. And then you can stop when you get to the circle and just rotate it around inside the circle and then you can do the other side. Once you cut it all out, obviously just loosen the tension again on the coping saw, take it out and put the next one in and repeat. When you finish, do put it back together again, otherwise the blade goat will, will go missing. So just put the blade back on afterwards and then uh, you're in a position to, to start filing down these edges and making them nice and smooth. Okay, so at this stage we're going to file down all the edges. So I'm going to use a range of different files. I've got a rounded file for the rounded section, a flat file, a square file, and I think I've got a half rounded file as well, as well um, that I'm going to use. I think I'll plan a second. 
and just file in our so that's cross filing we have it at 45 degrees and you go across the material up and down is the first technique in that that for that method it should remove the most amount of material just be wary that you don't want to take too much off so just take your time okay so you need to make sure you use a file that will help you get into the corners so you've got to choose one that will be appropriate for the for the design that you're trying to do what we've got here is a half rounded file which means it's got one point which um, is quite good to get into the corners okay and then obviously you need to rotate it around so that you can get to the the upper side it's easier if you're filing putting pressure down onto it but if you rotate it around you'll be able to then do that okay and then just repeat now what you can do now is if you wrap a bit of sandpaper around you, you can just draw file back and forth um, and if you wrap it around the file it just helps hold it in position a bit so you, you wrap it around and put your thumbs on it you can just draw a file back and forth to remove any uh, sections and then if you take it out afterwards and any little bits on the edges you can just then tidy those up with you just um, just with your thumb and the sandpaper and then just repeat the process for the for the other the other piece So at this stage, I'm going to um, I'm going to glue and panel pin um, some one by one timber to the sides, the two sides. Okay, so I'm just measuring the, the, the size of them. So it's around about 80 millimeters. And then with my metal ruler, I pushed up against the edge. I'm just going to mark 80 millimeters. Okay, and then I'm going to use a tri square just to make sure it's square. So push up the stock against the side and then just draw a line and obviously I do it down the sides so that I can see that I'm sawing straight to be nice and accurate with it. Okay, then you're going to put it into the bench hook. take my tannin saw and then just pull back three times on the waist side of the line and then just cut through and I need four of these so it'd be um, two on either end and then on two on the other end of these ones here so four pieces and you give it a light sand down afterwards just to make sure you don't get splinters so I've got a sandpaper board and a bit of sandpaper stuck down to a piece of MDF and then a uh, and then repeat the process and I'm using the first one as a little template for the others so I put a dot and then use the uh, tri square then just to make sure it is square and then repeat the process for the other four okay so at this stage I am using a bit of PVA wood glue and I'm going to glue down the pieces to the edges just make sure that it is right up to the edge should be exactly the same size okay so at this stage make sure it's lined up so you've got your two pieces of 1v1 tightly up against the edge and then I'm going to take a piece of uh, a corrugated cardboard and just push a panel pin through now the panel pin you've got to make sure is fairly small it can't be um, bigger than about 15 millimeters because otherwise it'll come all the way through both pieces of timber so you want it to be um, um, obviously fairly small. So what you do is you use the corrugated cardboard um, to protect your fingers from um, being hit by the hammer. So it just holds it in place whilst you're hitting the hitting the panel pin in. If you just push, if you just hit it in um, about a quarter of the way, and then you can remove the cardboard and then hit it in the rest of the way. At this stage you could clamp it down to make sure that it doesn't move because sometimes the uh, glue can make it a bit um, slippery until it's uh, panel pinned in properly and repeat then on the on the other pieces. Okay, 
Okay, so at this stage now I need to attach the, the end piece to the sides. Um, and obviously it's a bit tricky to figure out how to hold it in position whilst you were putting the panel pins in. So what I'm going to do is first off just make sure it's lined up. I'm going to put the glue on the end. Just make sure it is a PVA wood glue. And line it up. And I'm going to then clamp it to the edge of the table. So you can use a quick release clamp. It's got to overhang on the edge of the table for this, otherwise this part will uh, will get in the way. So you'll see. Position it where you need it to go and just clamp one side down. And then just panel pin it in roughly about kind of there and and obviously two panel pins, one there and one there, to hold it in position. And make sure the panel pins are in all the way, so make sure you hit it fairly firmly so that they don't stick out from the wood. Okay, the next stage is to put the other side, the other end down, so exactly the same process and overhang it again on the edge of the, of the table um, in exactly the same way. Okay now with the other the other side I'm going to put the glue on both ends. So I'm going to place it on both ends and then I'm going to place it in that gap um, so that I can get the panel pins in. You can see that it should hold together. And I'm going to put a quick release clamp on this end section, just to make sure it doesn't move around whilst I'm putting the panel pin in there. You'll see I'm positioning the um, quick release clamp so it's vertical, so it doesn't move around, then I can clamp this down to the table. So both pieces should be stationary. Turn it upside down, clamp it down, and then you can do the other side. Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to glue the base on. So I'm going to put glue around the edges of the base section. It's nice and evenly. You want to put a re you usually want to put enough on so it's definitely going to stick, but obviously not too much. You want it dripping everywhere, so you just got to judge how much things appropriate and you're using again a scrap piece of wood just to do this. Okay, now position your piece of wood on I'm just going to put a panel pin in each corner just to tack it in position whilst the glue is setting so I can still then work on it. Your panel pin can be a bit longer, it can be between 15 and 20 millimeters for this. And just make sure that you make sure you work out exactly where the, the the two pieces are. If the frame wasn't completely dry when you do this, it can shift the frame around. So you, you might want to wait for it to dry, or uh, you just got to be very careful and then maybe tap them back in and sides. And any any overhanging edges could be filed down or sanded down just to make sure that they, they're level with, with it all the way across. And if there's any sections that might come slightly loose, you can just then tap, just to make sure that they're, they're in firmly. And so at this stage, I'm gonna sand down these edges just because um, clamping it down with filing might have been a bit tricky. So I've just decided to go straight with the sander. Three millimeter MDF sands off really easily. So with the extractor on, just angle it. Um, be very careful that you don't angle it in such a way that it could it's not got a solid base it could slap down if, if you're not careful because the sanding belt you see the arrow it's going to go downwards you just got to be careful when you're positioning it so that it's uh, not too too much of an angle and just carefully move it back and forth and just sand off any any sections that uh, that are required to be to be level. Be very careful at this stage because of the panel pins. If the, if any of the sanding belt catches the panel pins, it can rip the sanding belt. So just make sure that the panel pins are in all the way. 
and um, and just be very careful not to do too much around where the, the panel pins are. So really just on the edges of the wood. Don't be sanding. And, and finally, don't sand off too much. You've got to be careful because it is only three millimeter MDF. It'll make it very thin if you um, sand for too long on this. Okay, now any existing little gaps or holes or anything, I'm just going to use the wood filler just to fill in any little sections that, um, uh, before I paint it. So I can see like tiny little gaps in places. I'm just, uh, I'm just using the scrap piece of wood here um, and then push it into the gap and then scrape off the excess. So just go around the outside and just look for any gaps. Now at this stage I'm going to use some acrylic primer and undercoat. I might need to do two or three coats of this um, to build up the layers to, to give it a nice finish. So you start by a very thin coat to spread out the paint nice and thinly and then you can leave it to dry or you can dry it with speed up the drying process with the dryer um, and then move on to a second coat. You can lightly sand down between coats um, if you want to, but just very lightly, so like a wet and dry paper, um, just so it gives this really smooth finish at the end. So just work your way through that. Obviously the inside as well. And don't use a tiny brush because it'll take a long time. So you've got to use like a, a medium to large brush um, to speed up the process. And you can see on that first coat, you can still see lots of wood through. That's nothing to worry about uh, when you do second coat or your third coat. It'll start to it'll start to uh, remove those sections. Okay, so you can see my first coat. So I'm trying not to leave any big big um, drips or any sections that uh, you think will will stand out. So you're just trying to keep it a nice thin coat. Okay, so it's been left to dry now. I'm then going to go on to my second coat. I actually did speed up the drying process with a dryer, so um, you can just use some heat, like a hair dryer or a little art dryer, just to speed it up a little bit if you don't want to have to wait for the next day to, 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 for it to dry. Okay, so the second coat should go on quite a lot thicker. Uh, sorry, still thinly with your coats, but um, the next coat should start to look a lot better than the first coat, and it should fill in any of those um, little where you can still see bits of wood through. You can see it's starting to come together a bit now. So you can see I've dried it again now and I'm doing a third coat. So you can see now hopefully the, the layer should really start to be uh, looking a lot nicer. Okay, now I'm going to keep my white, I, like, I quite like the white tray, keeps it nice and clean. I'm just going to use some white acrylic then on top as like a, a final coat. I might do one or two coats of this just in case I need it. And I'm lightly going to sand down first. So I'm using a little bit of wet and dry paper just to lightly sand down before I put the final coat on. So the wet and dry paper is the one, I've chosen a really light one, so 1200. Um, so give it a good sand, especially any bumps or anything that you find that um, is standing out. Okay, and again, just watch for any bits of sawdust or any bits of like anything that might have dropped into it. So do give it a clean before you start painting your final your final coat on this or your final coats. Try and keep it as smooth as you possibly can, so a nice clean area. Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to make a little um, stencil, uh, sorry, a little logo uh, with my initials. So you can see I'm just going to draw out um, K and S. And I'm going to try and link them together. So just at one point, link them. If you, in this case, if I link them um, completely, 
and it's not gonna look like it. So I'm just linking it just here, so you can see through the ads. I don't want it to come all the way to that, so I've stopped short, so there's a little gap just here, because then otherwise this bit will come off in the middle. So um, just draw out your design, obviously in block form, and then with a little craft uh, cutting mat and a craft knife and a metal ruler, you line up the metal ruler, and then only have the blade coming out, just a couple of lines there, and then uh, and then just have it vertical as well, so you can see, you've got to try and keep it as vertical as possible. People sometimes have these at an angle and it doesn't cut, it slips under the knife, so you've got to keep the knife vertical. Now when you get to the little curve bits, sometimes you might need to do like a little, like almost like a little small stabbing action into the paper. And you up and down, up and down just to try and get around it, because otherwise it can sometimes pull the paper and rip the paper off. Okay, so cut it out. I'm just going to cut this off into just a small piece, I don't need it to be huge. Now I'm going to use a piece of masking tape just to mask and tape it onto my design. So this is dry now, it's been dried. I'm just going to use a sponge. And I'm just going to very carefully put a little bit of sponge on the, uh, on a little bit of paint on the sponge. I've actually just dipped it into the lid there, There's some paint on the lid. And then very carefully just gently pushing down, don't push, don't scrape across, otherwise it'll go underneath the, the template. And just start building it up, nice and steady. You can see it's nice and just nice and clear, just your initials is quite good. Okay, so at this stage, I just want to add a little effect onto it just to make it look a little bit nice. I'm just using a scrap board. I'm going to just do like some little flips paint. So I've got a little pot of water and some blue that are the same blue as I used my logo. I'm going to put a little bit of blue on, on a stiff, it has to be quite a stiff paintbrush. So you need to feel for quite a stiff end paintbrush. And the paint mostly and then a tiny bit of water just to make it uh, a little bit looser. And then with your finger just flick it back and forth and it should then uh, apply just a little flickering blue flats. Just work around it until you're happy with the, the design. 